So here's a baby bottle. You talked about milk and it tells the parent the temperature and how full it is. So now the baby is wrapping their arms around a mini cell tower. It's Bluetooth. Mm. And someone wow. would say, it can't get worse than that. Wow. Now, here's the device. You put it on the diapers and it tells the parents on their phone when the baby is wet, when the diapers are wet. So now you're taking a cell phone tower and wrapping it around the baby. And you say, it can't get any worse than that. Let me show you the third and final slide. Here's a Bluetooth <laughs> pacifier. So now it tells the parent the temperature of the child. Now the baby is sucking on a mini cell tower. We've all heard about 5G a new faster network that has the potential to transform the internet, making for lightning speed in response times, forging the way to driverless autonomous cars and connecting your devices, robotics and smart home commands to provide a much more personal web experience. It sounds good, right? But what's the flip side of all of this technology. Our guest is Bill Cadwallader. He's a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist. He spent his adult life working around technology from the time he joined the US Marine Corps until he retired as a Lieutenant Colonel in the reserves. He's an author. His most popular book is called Exposed, the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself, including the dangers of 5G and smart devices. Now, if you all know me, you know how much I rely on my smart devices and enjoy them. But again, I want to know what the flip side is. Bill, our guest, also formed the consulting firm called Stop Dirty Electricity. And he's regularly called on to do EMF inspection and consulting for schools, businesses, and even private homes. He does this uh, for detecting and protecting people from electromagnetic radiation. And you can visit his website at www.stopdirtyelectricity.com. So I want to welcome to the show, Bill Cadwallader. <laughs> welcome. Great. Great. Thanks for having me here. I, I really appreciate it. And to let people know about what's happening with the EMFs, 5G and everything, and most importantly, on how to protect themselves. So what we specialize is in measuring and then showing people how they can minimize or reduce the radiation as much as possible. I have a smartphone, everyone does, we're never gonna get rid of it. The key is how do you reduce the radiation over 90%? And that's oh. the number that we're looking for. And in most cases, that's what we can do. And on my website, I have a little uh, 10, 10, 10 ways of reducing radiation immediately. It's a free download. And what I would recommend for people to do is just get that and then just start working through that. And it's very easy. Most things are just simple little habits, just little things that you change. And if, if you would just take my calls for one month and hear on the other side what people are going through and what simple little things we can do to reduce the radiation, I know most people would make those changes. Wow, I didn't think that you could reduce it up to 90%. So that's very interesting. So let me start out with my first question to you. And again, at the end of the, the interview, time allotting, I'm going to open it up for everybody here in the room and they can ask their own questions um, if they have any. So the first question I have is that, you know, a lot of people believe that 5G is dangerous. Uh, I even know somebody personally, a family that moved away from our community to more to like a hilltop way out in the sticks uh, because they wanted to avoid being near any 5G antennas. So my question is, if you can explain to us exactly what 5G is in simple layman terms that we can understand and uh, how dangerous is it really? Sure, uh, the G on the 5G is just generation. So they started with one generation, two generation, 3G, 4G, and now we're at 5G. So every time they go up a generation, 
it's faster, it's quicker, and unfortunately, it adds more radiation. And so it's just another layer on our cell phones that we're currently using. And because it's, um, there's more radiation, then potentially it's more dangerous to, depending upon how someone uses that. And in the 5G realm, there's an upper level, there's a mid range, and there's a lower range. And so depending upon what 5G you're talking about, then there's less radiation or more radiation. And as you go up to the high level, again, it's faster, doesn't go as far, but carries a lot more da uh, data and has more radiation. So, okay. So, uh, are, you know, should people before uh, our countries installing these antennas and this infrastructure, or should we be protesting against and saying, we don't need all of this technology, we wanna be safe and healthy? What is your answer? Well, uh, it's here in the U.S. They passed laws. The FCC has passed laws that in 1997, you could never deny a cell tower based on health or based on environmental concerns. And that was in 1997. And that's never changed. It's here. It's going to be here. So what I would recommend is that now because 5G at the upper levels doesn't go as far in America, they're starting to put uh, small cell towers every two to 12 houses. That's where the danger yeah. comes. If it's a mile, mile and a half, two miles away, we've lived with that for over 20 years. So those are the things I would, if you're in a community, I'm in a community that controls their own streets and everything else. And so what I would recommend is if you have something like that, to make sure that your community does not allow that to happen. If it's private property, you can do that. Um, if, if in fact you can't do that, then we get to the point of shielding and the shielding would, if they put up an antenna, then what you would do is you would shield those walls of your home. And normally the shield works pretty, uh, effectively, but unfortunately it's here and most countries have laws that say you can never deny it and they all put it in. Mm -hmm. Because I'm wondering, you know, even if a person could, let's say he's, let's say that he's right and that um, this is very dangerous uh, for our health and we should you know, not be um, putting in this infrastructure. But on the other hand, I was thinking that other countries are going to do this and for your own defense of your own country, you need to have this technology I mean, you have to keep up with the world. Otherwise, if you stay behind in Russia or China or whatever, and they're advancing, even if it's unhealthy for their citizens, you have to worry about your defense. So what would you say about that? Yeah, I, I would agree. And, and again, the 5G isn't the issue. It's the placement of the antennas toward where people live, sit, stand and sleep where the homes are. That's where the issue is. It's going to be here, but I agree for defense. Uh, they have what they call the Internet of Things, IoT. I went to one of the largest shows in Las Vegas early January. I live in Las Vegas. And uh, so far, they're up to three, over 3 billion devices. So there's a, less than 8 billion people that automatically connect by themselves. And so they expect that to get up to 35 billion by 2025. And there's just so much wireless uh, information that's happening, what you can do is in your home, you can deny those things. So once you deny those things in your home, or you use them expeditiously, oh, I don't need that, so I'm going to turn it off, or I'm going to cover my router with some material, uh, because routers in a home are designed to go two, three, four, or five homes. So there's material for about $40. You can buy something, cover your router, still get the signal inside your home. But I agree, 5G is here. It's needed for defense and other things within a, a country as well as just commerce. You'll be left behind if you don't have the 5G because of the speed and the amount of data it carries. Right. I'm going to I'm going to comment on that, but I want to say so if you cover your modem, will you still be able to get Wi-Fi throughout your home? Uh, yes, let me. Um, sorry, didn't have didn't have this right next to me. So here's a piece of material. You can go out to lessemf.com. And what happens is there's two levels. There's extra and then there's normal and there's large and small. So what you do is you just buy one and then you just cover it. Uh, put it over your router or your modem like this. 
And then what you do is you go to the farthest place of your home and just make sure you can do everything you can. And if you can't, then you sort of open it up a little bit, you know, away from people. And it works really well. Uh, in 2012, when I started this business, uh, we could have people turn off Wi-Fi routers. Now you can't do it because security is connected to it. Uh, safety and security devices are in the house. So this is a way of shielding your own router. And for about $40, it's great. Just to let you know, normally a router will be about 2.5 million uh, microwatts per meter squared. In the US, uh, what we want to do is have people in the low hundreds mid to low hundred. So you're at 2.5 million. It decreases as you go away from it. Uh, but again, that's way, way too much. No, I sit by a router, router all day long. So um, let me ask you again, just for our listeners, what is the website again for anybody who wants uh, to write it down? Uh, StopDirtyElectricity.com. And then also I have some videos on YouTube, Stop Dirty Electricity. My favorite one is Step Away from the Microwave. So turn on a microwave, have a small meter, and then we start walking through the home and we're about 40 feet away when it starts to become safe. So whenever you flip your microwave on, make sure you just walk as far away as you can. And always remember the pets. Right now, I, whenever I go into a home to measure, I spend 25% uh, measuring. I always ask where the pets uh, sit during the day and at night where they sleep because you really have to watch out for their pets, their size of their body, and this much radiation makes a big difference. You're talking about the harm that this radiation does, but maybe you can tell us all exactly what harm are you talking about? So there's over 5,000 studies now that shows all the health uh, concerns. Uh, I have, uh, if you go out to YouTube, or I can, I can show you some of the harms if you want to see the, some of those health effects, I can bring that up if you if sure. You're, the, you're, you're available to, the screen is sure. available for you. Let me just bring this up uh, and then do a share. Uh, and then, uh, oops. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to ask you about wearing your phone in your pocket also. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not a not a good thing to do. So, um, let me see if I can get to those health concerns. These actually talk about. Let me let me just go over a couple of things. The glioblastoma multiform uh, brain tumors. Are, uh, hang on, hang on, Bill. Somebody, we just have to mute somebody. Uh, maybe Rod can take care of that. Go ahead. Right, the glioblastoma multiform brain tumors have now doubled and tripled in a number of the countries around the world. Uh, here's the Netherlands, uh, they've doubled from 89. About 89 is when the cell phone started. And these are very aggressive. So if you look at this particular red line, this is in England, how they doubled and tripled, as well as Denmark. Um, and so that's a problem when you hold your cell phone up here, the radiation is so intense that in 18 months, we had six of our friends develop a tumor right where they had their phone in six months. I, I mean, in 18 months. So 10 years ago, how often did that happen? It's, it's really the amount of radiation is really high. And then here's one of my friends. Look at that. That's where that glioblastoma multiform, unfortunately. Um, and uh, if, if I could talk just a little bit about, um, this is an interesting thing, the colorectal cancer uh, rates in young adults have actually gone up. So up here, the 65 year olds, it's actually dropping on the left-hand side. But then look at this uh, over here, the 20 to 49s, they've actually gone up. So why is that? Could it be poor nutrition, sedentary lifestyle, obesity? or look where ladies normally carry their cell phone and look where guys are. And most people don't realize is that your cell phone is not a brick. So even if you're not on a call, every six to 30 seconds, the cell phone tries to communicate with the nearest cell tower, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi device, and it puts out thousands of times the safe level. But um, so here are, the, here are some of the health risks. So uh, I have several pages of these, anywhere from brain cancer to melanoma. 
ovarian cancer, the uterine cancer, ADD, ADHD, chronic fatigue, skin issues, even hair loss, uh, heart problems, multiple sclerosis, numbness, tingling, weakening of the immune system. And uh, what, what we do know real quick is we know that this type of radiation damages the DNA, compromises the blood-brain barrier, and then weakens the immune system. So those are the three things we know. And I just wanna say, we've had diseases for millenniums. So could radiation be the straw that broke the camel's back? So I'm not saying every single illness in the world is caused by radiation, but again, could it be that pushes someone over the edge? But those are about six pages of the radiation. And I just wanted to let you know, there's over 5,000 studies now that show uh, from independent sources, all these health effects from radiation. I have to tell you that uh, people don't believe me, but I tell them when I, when I uh, hold my phone, I get, I, if I hold it for more than, I don't know, a minute or so, I get physical pain. I get like pins and needles in my hands. If I put it on my thigh and my leg and my lap, also it starts to like, I feel heat and I feel pins and needles and I don't like touching my phone. I use it, but I'm usually not holding it. I have it on the table. What is all that about? So, so what happens is it's the radiation. And so most of us are sort of in the center on, on the radiation. Some people don't feel it at all. And other people, as you go a little bit this side, then they start to feel it more. So all this radiation is affecting us, everyone. The question is, has someone started to develop symptoms? So you've started to develop some symptoms so with your router, where it is, and I assume it's pretty close to you. A long like time. about two feet away. <laughs> yeah, so definitely one of two things. So when I go into a home, I have a good, better, and best solution, whatever works the best for the client. So what I would do first is try to move it as far away as you can. If you can't move it for $40 from lessemf.com, it's called Signal Tamer. It's yeah, I, I, want you, I want you to repeat that website slowly. Sure, lessemf.com. Okay. And it's called Signal Tamer, and it's a little bag that you just go over it. And if you go to my website, I actually have uh, selected products on my website. So people will say, hey, I can't find this product. So what I've done is I've just put it there for convenience and you can just click on it and it'll take you right there. Same thing with my book. If you uh, want to uh, purchase the exposed book, you can go to my website or just go to Amazon as well. And uh, but that's for so if someone was going to do two things, I would never charge my cell phone on your nightstand, move it as far away as you can. And wherever the router is, move it as far away and then shield it because it's the one of the biggest sources in your home of radiation. And what happens is your body the immune system can only handle so much. And when it gets, uh, I'm not an MD, this is what MDs have told me, but when it gets up to a certain level, then you can start developing symptoms mm -hmm. as some people do. Mm, interesting. So um, is it true what they say that if you use your cell phone in a car or an elevator, it's more dangerous or that's not proven? Um, in, a, uh, in an elevator, there's no way for it to get out. And, and in my book, I have DDT. So it's the new DDT. What's the dosage? What's the distance? And what's the time? So those three components figure out how dangerous something is. So how much time do you spend in an elevator? You know, seconds, right? In an elevator versus if you, if you slept in your bed at night, you have eight hours where you have the phone close to your head and that's a lot worse. So it's probably harder in an elevator, but again, you're in that so, so little bit. And then in a car, what happens is you have a lot of windows, so it can come in and it can escape through the windows, but there is some metal. So if you're using your phone in an open field, obviously it's going completely out. In a car, it can reflect, but how often are you talking in your car? Again, dosage, distance, and time, you put those you put those three together and that tells you how, how dangerous something is. 
Okay, so you're saying that most likely because of the, the the amount of time that we're using a phone in a car or an elevator, it's not really something that we really need to focus on. That it d- could do harm, but it's not the main thing. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would. Yeah, I would. I would say that. Okay, uh, let me ask you about um, the Wi-Fi in our house and even those little twirly light bulbs that they sell now. I, I never like those light bulbs. I don't like the light it gives out. I like the regular round, warm light. Um, but a lot of times you can't even get those anymore. Um, what, you know, what else do we have to be afraid of? And what do these light bulbs do? And what else do we need to be aware of in our house? So uh, most light bulbs in the US now being sold are LEDs. So from about 2008 to about 2020, they sold those curly Q lights, which are CFLs. So those caused a lot of problems. I would replace those with incandescents. So the best bulb is just the incandescent bulb they had for a hundred years. And the problem with the LEDs or the CFLs, let me just uh, mention the LEDs real quick. So the LEDs put out a blue light and that blue light actually reduces your melatonin. A couple of things melatonin does is it allows you to get into a deeper sleep, but then also melatonin suppresses cancer. So that's why the LED lights are bad. The other thing is they're constantly flickering thousands of times a second. So your eye doesn't pick it up, but your brain's picking it up and it's very, very hard on you. And then the final thing is it actually creates what's called dirty electricity. So my website's called Stop Dirty Electricity and it increases those levels uh, gigantically. I wanted to uh, comment again, I'm gonna go back to the 5G for a moment. So you're saying that 5G really, if you take precautions, you're not too near it, it shouldn't be too harmful for us. Is that what you're saying? Right, it depends on where the antenna is, how close the antenna is. So what I would do is I would recommend everyone at this point to buy a small meter. So it's a residential meter. I use commercial meters costing thousands of dollars. But if you, uh, and it's called the Safe and Sound Classic. So the Safe and Sound Classic was developed up in Canada and with US help, uh, US materials. And you can go out to GreenWave. Uh, it's actually on my website. So it's called the Safe and Sound Classic. You can click on that. And uh, that's the one I would use. It's about $158 US. And then it'll last you for 10 years. So immediately you yourself can tell when you have an issue and when you don't have an issue uh, inside your home. With 5G specifically? With 5G. So it measures 99% of the 5G as well. 5G, 4G, and as well as 3G. They don't have an app. Mm-hmm. They don't have an app for that. You have to buy a meter. There's no app. That- yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens is it's the antennas. So it's it's extreme issue to develop these meters to make sure that they're very accurate. This is the latest meter that was designed. So it's the most accurate. They have a big brother called the Safe and Sound Pro 2. It's about $385 US. Uh, so if you have the budget, I would get that but it's really worth it. So if you think about $158 over 10 years, that's $15 a year. So I would, I would really use that to determine what's happening is at the, at the um, CES show, the Consumer Electronics Show, over 2000 booths, what they're doing is they're putting wireless radiation in all these devices. So there's a Wi-Fi toothbrush. They're putting it in air cleaners and you don't even know it. And I measure air cleaners, they have it plugged in, not even on, and it's still broadcasting radiation. Two years ago, I had at the biggest cell phone conference in the US, a gentleman stood up and said, I have 60 wireless devices in my home, Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth. And they all put out radiation. So most of the time, it's not the 5G tower right outside. Most of the time, it's what you brought into your home, which then you can uh, manage. I wanted to ask you, you have something that you wrote called hunting in in Huntington Beach. I'm assuming it's California. It's one of the first cities in the United States to install the new smart fusion pole. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is a smart fusion pole? So uh, if I can share my screen, screen, I'll flip to that real quick. Uh, And let me do a share. 
So uh, there it is. So what happens is it actually looks like a lamppost, but on that lamppost, they've actually put 5G antennas inside. So they literally hide these 5G antennas. And when these people are walking up and down, they have no idea that they're getting a dose of radiation just as they walk underneath. So that was one of the first ones that they did. And it's back in 2018 is when they did that. Now, uh, Las Vegas has uh, two years ago had 7,500 sensors on lampposts around where I live. And one of the other issues is the privacy issue. So they have surveillance where now they can listen to you when you walk under one of these devices. If they install this module, they can actually listen to your conversation as well as facial recognition on more advanced ones. And recently I read that China had over 600 million cameras installed that do facial recognition where now they can identify you uh, in a crowd and do whatever they need to do. So again, one is radiation, the other is privacy. So I don't see on this fusion pole a big long um, rectangular box like you do with 5G. How can you tell that there's a surveillance thing there? Well, you couldn't just normally taking, you couldn't because it's just, you know, it's embedded in the pole right here. So again, you just can't tell it. The only way you could tell that is with the meter at this point. Uh, I'll flip to another one. So these type of things you can sort of see where you have some things at the top, you have a camera here, you have something here. So most of the time they're, they're not trying to hide it. So they're here, these are more cameras. Um, that they're actually putting up for more surveillance versus, uh, but, uh, and then again, you wouldn't know they're, they're in these lamp posts, but they're actually there. Here in America, you know, they sometimes try to hide it, but you can sort of see. And uh, again, what you wanna do is look at your lamp post. And if there's something on top that looks like it shouldn't have, and here's the key, if you have a box either right here or close to the top, then that would uh, indicate that it's an antenna at this point, because at this point they don't have to hide it in the US. So how do you shield your home from all of this radiation? So let me stop sharing at this point. Uh, what, what, again, one has to do with ambient radiation if it's outside your home and one has to do with inside. So inside you would take precautions to obviously reduce what you have. So uh, I can share, let me share the screen again. I have some things on that. Oh, I hit the share. And let me flip to the, to the end real quick. Let's see if the page down looks here. I um, thought I could hit the keyboard here and get down there real quick, but obviously it's not working there. That's while okay. It just shows us how uh, technology isn't perfect. <laughs> Tomorrow, while we're waiting, yes. Uh, yes. two questions. One was about what about laptop computers and does a cell phone admit even if it's turned off? Ah, good, good questions. Yeah, so uh, what has to do with laptop computers, uh, they're constantly Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are normally on on a laptop computer. And so um, what happens is on that is you normally never want to have a laptop computer on your lap. You always want to put it on a table as far as you can go. And then what I would do is um, if you can, a uh, good, better, and best solution, I would hardwire it. So there is a way of hardwiring a laptop computer and uh, with an ethernet cable. And then I would turn airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. Uh, I do talk about this in this little 10, 10 things you can download for free on my website. Uh, but that's, I, I would try to hardwire it. If you can't hardwire it, put it as far away as you can. And then if you're not using a wireless mouse, turn Bluetooth off and just have the Wi-Fi going. Unfortunately, it's, it's a problem and the best solution is to hardwire. 
And what was the second question? Uh, the second question had to do with uh, tel mm -hmm. uh, telephones. Uh, if you turn them off, do they still admit? And there's another one here that says, which LED, LED lights have more light, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, et cetera? So uh, on the cell phone, if you turn it off, off, it doesn't admit any radiation at that point. But also, if you want to carry it, so my wife often hikes close to uh, Las Vegas. There's a place that she hikes. And so if you turn airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, then the phone's completely safe. She can take video, she can take pictures. And every so often, you just turn airplane mode off again. And get an extra so uh, can, you, can you repeat off, that, Bill, you, just again, just sure. you, you turn off the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi, you said? Yeah. So on a phone, you turn Bluetooth off, Wi-Fi off. And again, it's in this little free handout you can download and then airplane mode on. So airplane mode on turns off uh, text and voice and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. When you turn those off, then they obviously turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. And that's the safest way to carry a phone. And again, think about that colorectal cancer, that kids 20 to 49, their rates are going up. How can that be? It's because of the radiation every six to 30 seconds. It's checking to see, uh, checking for the nearest cell tower, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi device. So, uh, yep. So still, if you're, if you're on your way out, now I have a purse I usually go out with, so I usually, carry my phone in my purse. I don't like carrying it on my, on my body. I told you I'm very sensitive to it. But Good. if somebody likes to, or they're a guy, they don't carry a purse and you have to wear it on you, where would you suggest is the best or safest place to wear your phone? Um, if, it's, if it's actively happening, there is no safe place. If you still can receive phone calls and text messages and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, there is no safe place. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I go to the uh, Costco, I don't know if we can mention, but I go to a big box store, my wife wants to be able to get a hold of me. So I have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off because I don't need that. And I have, uh, so I can receive text or messages. So what I do is I carry it in my hand. So I don't carry it in my pocket, I carry it in my hand. And that distance makes a huge amount, just that small a distance, it's a, it's a lot safer doing it that way. Uh, and then whenever I get into a car, I always put it in the seat next to me. Whenever I sit down at a table or something like that, I put it either as far away as I can get to it. Remember DDT, dosage, distance, and time. So you always wanna increase the distance but I do want to say there is no safe place to carry it on your person if it's still active, if, if you haven't turned airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. Mm. Did you still want to do share, uh, screen sharing or? Uh, yeah, I have it here. Okay. So uh, here's, here's has, unfortunately, with the 5G infrastructure, sadly, sometimes we have to do uh, shielding options. So here's some shielding options. Uh, in walls and rooms, you, there's foil, uh, there's actually shielding fabrics. So similar to this, they have different types of shielding fabrics. Sleeping canopies, one of the best things you can do, it's actually a canopy made out of material where it's like a, a princess bed, where it actually covers the entire bed and it protects you. And then finally, there's shielding paint. Shielding paint lasts because it's the most permanent. Once that paint goes on, it comes out of Germany and it's used in the German military to shield uh, uh, places so people can't actually spy on it and things can't go out. And then for windows, you can either put the material in front of the windows <clears throat> or they have shielding film. And then attic, you would use the same type of devices. If something's very high up and it's coming through the attic, then you would use some of these like foil uh, to actually shield the attic. So those are the ways of shielding your home from outside source. Now, the one thing you can't do is if you still have a lot of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and everything bouncing uh, inside your home, what happens is all these, uh, all these types of foiling, uh, I mean shielding, are reflective. So if you actually have something in your house and, it's, and it, let's say it's a router, and you have this up, it'll hit that shield and actually bounce back into your house 
where some of that uh, router radiation would be brought to the outside. So whenever you do shielding, you've got to have, you have to have a meter before and after. If you're not hiring a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist, you've got to measure before and you, you have to measure after because it's reflective. Some of it can actually make it worse. Okay, but but most people, I mean, unless an antenna was installed right near your home, most people probably wouldn't have to go to this expense and a degree, correct? Yes, yes. It depends upon your neighbors. Your neighbors could cause an issue. So they might have their Wi-Fi router right next to a wall and you might be 15 feet away. So that's why I like the fabric so much. And actually I have some of that fabric in my home right next to my uh, bedroom a wall because we have a neighbor, neighbor with Wi-Fi that's not too far away with a, a mm -hmm. from us and it works really well. Plus it's temporary, you can put it up and then you can take it down and it's very sheer looking. You know, it looks more like you know, I, I won't say it's decoration, you know, interior decorator, but uh, it works very well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before the show, I was uh, going on YouTube to look about, uh, look at information about 5G, et cetera. And then I discovered, because I'm not, this is not my field at all, that they're working already on 6G. And they said that every 10 years, basically, it's another, as you said, the G is generation, and that we are not, the, the 6G that they're working on is not for us, it's actually for, um, you know, the world as it will be in 10 years from now, and they're, they're in fact, the 6G, they're, their, their planning date to launch is even less than that. It's, it's in 2030, which is eight years from now. So, you know, it's just hard to keep up with all of these 5G, 6G. And after 6G, I'm imagining seven, eight, nine. Yeah. yeah. And it's just different techniques. They have different protocols that they use to move the data faster. And uh, because what they want to do is they want to do robotic surgery in another remotely. So you have a surgeon doing remote robotic surgery, you know, a, 2000 miles away and he hits something and immediately it happens. So things like that, you know, where, where you need instant reaction to what's happening. You're right. You can't have a six second delay. No, not in <laughs> surgery. I wouldn't want that. Right. I, I understand also with autonomous cars that each car, when, we, when they become autonomous when, and when all of society is more or less with the driverless cars, that every car will know where every other car on the planet is because they have to react in, in those split of a split of a split of a second. That's again why they need 5G. <clears throat> so at the uh, Consumer Electronics Show from uh, Tucson, Arizona to Phoenix, which is about 100 miles, they recently had a full semi truck, a full big, big truck in America. It backed out from the, uh, from the dock, got on the road, went all the way up to the uh, Phoenix on the freeway, and then docked again with no driver in the car. So in the truck, rather, there was a driverless vehicle and they need three things. You need cameras, you need radar, and then what they call is LIDAR, which is a light radar. So they're getting that way. And one of the things that's interesting is, is the hacking. So two years ago, there was an Israeli company at the CES and they were, they were actually providing security so someone can't hack into your driver's loop driverless vehicle, because they've shown that that can actually be done now, where you're going 65 miles down a freeway, and then all of a sudden someone says to your car, you're actually on a one lane dirt road, and immediately it stops, puts on the brake and everything else. So there is a whole security issue with this. And secondly, I'm not an insurance agent, but imagine an insurance company and said, hey, I'm going to drive my car, but I'm going to take my hands off the wheel and I'm going to pay, play poker while I'm driving down the freeway. Uh, I, I, I don't think the insurance companies have actually gone into this, you know, how much they'll let you do this type of thing. Right. You know, and, the, and last week I did a, uh, an interview on technocracy, how technology is taking over our lives. Sure. And they were talking about how uh, President Biden in the United States wants to uh, make sure that by a certain year also within this decade, that all electric cars or uh, et cetera, all new cars will have what's called a kill switch mm -hmm. on it so that the government or authorities, whatever, can just stop your car. Doesn't matter if you're on the freeway wow. or anywhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty scary and invading your privacy as well. Um, I wanted to ask you also, 
you write uh, also that, um, well, let me start with this. We're always being told to trust the science, trust the science. And right on the back cover of your book, that electromagnetic radiation is the tobacco of the of our digital age. Now, I'd like you to explain that to our listeners. So, so what happens is is that in uh, so people know smoking is bad. Some people still smoke, but the vast majority of people know know it's not bad and they don't smoke. So, someone would say, "Well, as soon as the science was there." then they would have done something to stop it. So the first uh, paper that linked smoking with lung cancer was 1929. So it took seven, 70 years in the US to actually pass a law where the tobacco companies gave money back to the states. So 70 years. So the science in 1929 said, but no one believed it. Same thing with this particular thing uh, with EMF. So the EMF is the tobacco of the digital age because like tobacco, it can kill you and most people don't even know it. And they're actually banned from telling people in the US because mm -hmm. of the attorneys and because of the advertisers. So if you're advertising cell phones on a particular uh, show, they do a lot in the US, they're not gonna have any particular commercial or anyone that would get on that say, you know, these aren't the safest thing in the world, but we'll show you how to use them safely. So that's the problem that the science is there, but there's a collusion between government and corporations to actually keep the quote unquote science from coming out and the truth coming out. Right. And, you know, I remember seeing ads for, you know, in the 1960s about, you know, doctors recommend camel cigarettes or something like that, you know, and <laughs> today we're like, what? Um, and I remember also uh, in the 1960s, they were advertising, um, they were advertising um, baby formula saying that it was better than breast milk because it was made by scientists in a laboratory, you know? And today we know that, of course, nothing compares to breast milk, that, that formula is only secondary to that. Um, you, you're showing here a picture, talk about it. Yeah, in the 50s, so here was an ad where here's a doctor recommending camels and here's another doctor saying 2,000, 20,000 physicians like lucky cigarettes. So again, that's where they were in the 50s, even though 1929, they said, this is uh, not good for your lung cancer. Can I show you some things about the babies and what, what is happening to the kids? Please. If you have a second. Yes. So at the Consumer Electronics Show, there were three particular uh, devices I thought were really of note that you need to see. So let me show you the first device. So here's a baby bottle. You talked about milk and it tells the parent the temperature and how full it is. So now the baby is wrapping their arms around a mini cell tower, it's Bluetooth. Mm. And someone wow. would say, it can't get worse than that. Wow. Now, here's the device, you put it on the diapers and it tells the parents on their phone when the baby is wet, when the diapers are wet. So now you're taking a cell phone tower and wrapping it around the baby. And you say, it can't get any worse than that. Let me show you the third and final slide. Here's a Bluetooth ah. pacifier. So now it tells the parent the temperature of the child. Now the baby is sucking on a mini cell tower. How can that be good? And I saw so many of them. And I do want to mention in the back of my book, what I have is if someone doesn't have a meter in Appendix A, uh, first appendix, I have all the different devices, wireless and wired devices that cause radiation. So if someone goes to the nursery section, they can say, oh, look at this. This isn't good for the baby. This isn't good. So again, if you don't have a meter in the back of the book, and what I do is I update it. So I'll be updating this uh, with the devices, but you have 98% of the uh, devices now in that book. So again, it's, it's really bad what they're doing with the kids and I don't think they'll ever make the connection. They will never blame these type of devices. And then the Wi-Fi babies, there's no pre-market studies on any of this, no long-term studies at all. 
And also there's a digital overload that's happening to the kids. We were never designed to have this much, this much information. Stanford, Rutgers, different uh, universities have done, done studies on this. And look at this. Uh, here's a baby and they've got that tablet right next to their gut, right there. And it's just radiating radiation. And I had a relative, a distant relative, came up to me at a Thanksgiving and said, hey, I just had a tumor removed from my abdomen. I said, oh, wow, what happened? He said, well, I'm okay now. He said, could it have been my tablet? I said, I'm not sure, what did you do? Every night he took his tablet, put it right on his stomach, read for two hours. And the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, as well as the cell phone was just getting them. And unfortunately, that's what happened. So I just wanted to show you that. I know people who fall asleep with the phone in their hands and uh, I'm <laughs> don't ask. Okay, I, I wanna ask, do your neighbors think that you wear a tinfoil hat? Oh, there's Bill, he's got these screens in his house and his curtains and walls. And I mean, how do they react to this? Well, you know, uh, only 5% of the, of the population is interested, just to let you know, only 5% and then less than 5% want to do things. So what I normally do, and, and again, what, what I would recommend is that I, I talk to people about this, about my qualifications, and if they're interested, I hand them something like this, because immediately if they're interested, number one says, don't charge your cell phone on your nightstand. And so that's what I do now. I just, you know, I don't have any outward trappings. I mean, you know, normally people don't come into my bedroom and say, hey, what's what's that, you know, on your wall? And, you know, it's just a thin piece of fabric and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, I just, you know, if they're interested, they ask me what I do and I tell them I reduce, by reducing radiation, I reduce the cancer risk and the health risk. If they're interested, then they go for it. And, and again, it's the young mothers I mainly get the call from, from 20 to about 49. They're the most interested, they're interested in their kids, and I'm just happy to help anyone that would be interested. But I, I don't go around with signs and tinfoil hats and, and do anything. So I just take safe, and, and that's the nice thing. You can do all these things and reduce your radiation normally over 90%, just following some of these small little habits, changes. And so if someone asked me tonight, right now, what could I do? Don't charge your cell phone on your nightstand. Move it as far away as you can. And then secondly, cover your router if it's close to you with a piece of fabric you can get at lesscmf.com. It's called Signal Thing. In your literature, you even talk about radiation from, correct me if I'm wrong, from toasters and things in your house. And was I right or wrong? Yeah, they're actually putting on, and so I have a section in the book where all the Wi-Fi and I have a kitchen section that you can flip to. And when I went out there uh, this year, they have Wi-Fi and toasters, they have Wi-Fi and crock pots, they have all this stuff. So you at a distance with your smartphone, you can, oh, the crock pot now needs to be turned off. So I'll turn off the crock pot. And so everyone I asked out there with all these devices, if they didn't have Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth in it, they would always say, we're working on it because that's what everyone, it's called the smart home, where you literally can control everything in your home with, a, with your smartphone. And unfortunately, all those things constantly put out radiation, most of them, if they're just plugged in, not even if they're on. So if someone wants a safer uh, environment, what I would recommend that they do is when they're buying something, ask someone, can I control it with my cell phone? If you can control it with your cell phone, there's a wireless connection there. So all of these smart bulbs that you would use with your Alexa or um, things to turn on your house, a smart, a smart house, a smart house, you would say but, it's dangerous to live in. Yeah, let me, let me just close the blind real quick. I'm getting some sun here. Okay. And then I'm, I'm almost done here. So if anybody has any questions, get them ready again and uh, Bill so, will answer. So what happens is the smart bulb. So when the guy said, I have 60 wireless devices, now you have to count every single smart bulb you have in your home. And what happens is I've been in IT, computers, information, technology all my life. And what happens is the Philips bulb, 
was actually had a had a problem with it that you could hack in. So someone hacked into the Philips bulb in a home, they got to the network inside the home, and they were watching a young girl in her room because they had a camera in the room. So all these devices that you have, they all have software and the security is not there. You know, some of it's there, some of it's not there, but here's a Philips light bulb, they hacked into that. So I wouldn't have any cameras in, you know, personally, I'm just talking personally, you have to decide yourself. I would never have a camera in my room, in my home. And then most importantly, I would never have a smart device. Um, if I do, then I would make sure it's on a little uh, on and off remote control that I can turn it off like Alexa. If I don't have Alexa, it puts out a lot of radiation. Uh, I've been in home in a home where I covered it with this but I would put it on a remote control switch and it's on my website. They cost $11.50 US from the big box stores. So you plug the device, uh, you plug the remote control into the wall, you plug the device in the wall. And then with a little remote control, like a TV, you can turn it on when you need it and turn it off when you don't. Can you trust the Alexa when it you put it on the setting that it does not activate the camera? Can you trust it? Uh, you know, there's always people hacking around and, and I just read recently, uh, again, I, I wouldn't personally have it. I would never recommend if someone has it, I would turn it on, you know, use it and then remotely turn it off, you know, so now it's off off. But uh, recently, uh, I, I get emails almost every day. And now they're saying Alexa or any of those smart speakers, technically, they're called a the smart speaker, you can't put it near a window. Why can't you put it near a window? Someone outside could then actually speak. Alexa picked it up and say, could you start my car? Could you turn on the air conditioning? Could you open up the electronic locks? So now you can't even have it close to a window where someone, a burglar could come up and say, please open up the electronic locks and turn off the, uh, turn off the, the, uh, the alarm system. <laughs> yeah, because they can hear you through a window. I'd never thought about that. And I just read about it. So if someone has that, please move it away from windows. Fascinating. So again, just to just to uh, sure. repeat, uh, if you have a, a network like a smart house, the weakest link, if someone wants to hack into that weakest link, they can then take over the entire network, like That's with that light bulb. Yep. Fascinating. That's what they do with a little Phillips light bulb and Phillips admitted it was a problem. Fascinating. Uh, all right. So basically, to sum everything up, you're saying that 5G is here. It is not that dangerous if you're not living under this antenna all the time and that we have to learn to live with it. And it's not something that we should be, you know, fighting and saying no 5G and, and not moving away just to kind of like we have to work with it just as if we have to work with everything that could be cancer forming or Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and let me just say there is a lot more radiation with 5G. So it's even more importantly to take those small steps on how I handle my cell phone and things because it's actually putting out more radiation than the 4G mm. did. So in most cases, so again, that's why it's more important. The most important is to take these small steps to protect yourself. I'd like to play, if I can, the video that you did where you measured the radiation leaking out of your microwave. I think it was very powerful. It, can I do that? Uh, Please. Today, we're gonna to look at a microwave. You've often heard, get away from the microwave. If you turn it on, let's see how far you have to get away to be in the safe level from radiation. We're gonna turn on the Acousticom 2. There's one button and let's turn some sound on. As you can see, it's in the green. We wanna to get to the yellow or green. Those are the safe levels. Now let's turn on the microwave and see what happens. As you can see, it went all the way up to the red. So let's go back and see how far we need to get back. So we're actually gonna, still in the red, we get a little bit of an amber. A little bit of an amber still in the red. And the type of radiation we're measuring here is Wi-Fi and wireless radiation. And as you can see, it goes right through the walls. We've, we're on the, uh, we've gone through a couple of walls and it's still there. So just going out of the room is not gonna help. We've actually gone through a kitchen, a hallway. Now we're into a living room. 
can still see it's in the amber now and we're going to try to get it into the yellow. Every so often it goes into the red. So now we're through three rooms and we're in another hallway so let's continue to go back and see how far we're away. Probably about 40 feet away at this point. Maybe a little bit farther and now we finally start to see a little bit of a yellow and I'm going to turn the sound off. So as you can see, you have to really get away from a microwave once you turn it on. If you want more information, go to StopDirtyElectricity.com. Thank you. All right. So if anybody has any questions, Rod, anybody have anything well, the that only, they want to? The only other question that we had was about uh, smart TVs, um, you know, what they emit, et cetera, et cetera. Now, TVs by itself emit some type of radiation, but not uh, the type you're talking about, correct? Right, so, so the new smart TVs, they actually uh, emit Wi-Fi or Bluetooth mm -hmm. and or another type of wireless radiation. So there's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, but in a smart home, there's actually what's called Zigbee and Z-Wave or two <coughs> other types of wireless connection. So normally I say wireless, including everything, but also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So on a smart TV, normally what I do in a home is there's, it's very difficult to turn off that so get your distance away from it. Remember, distance is your friend, DDT, dosage, distance, and time. And then make sure it's on a, uh, a power strip. Whenever you're not using it, turn it off. And what you have to do, if any device has any Wi-Fi, wireless, or Bluetooth, you literally have to cut the power to it or unplug it. Because I've seen them plugged in, and they're, and they're not even on. They're still putting out Wi-Fi, wireless, or Bluetooth. So yeah, yes, the next on the one, TV. yeah, Shirley asked uh, about uh, home surveillance cameras, uh, radiation emitting. If they're blue, if they're uh, Wi-Fi capable, yes, it's the same thing, correct? <clears throat> yes, and most of the time, uh, the cameras are far enough, so it's not too much of a problem. It's it's of a lesser problem because almost everyone has a security system, and they're almost always wireless. We would want those wired, but very few people have that now. Right. That's that's it. Uh, tomorrow. I, I think uh, D Diana has her hand up. Diana okay. Friedman. Go ahead with your question, Diana. Diana. We don't hear oh, you, Diana. No, You're muted. Uh, unmute yourself. Uh, there you go. I unmute. I have. Let me explain. I have problems with my computer. So always give me a minute or so. It's an old computer. I have a question. I live in a neighborhood where the wires from my house on are all underground. And there's like a green box out on the lawns. Is that considered radiation? I don't know whether it's for, I don't know whether it's for, um, for the cable or for the telephones. And it's twice on my property because I'm, be I'm right next door to the old overhead wires. I also had the old overhead wires and they're also, I don't know whether they took away the, um, the um, solar panels, which were on the telephone poles. So I don't know about that. And I came in late to this thing. My girlfriend told me about it. And also I have a flip phone. Is that considered? Because mine is still a 3G. <clears throat> and for two and a half years, Verizon has been complaining and telling me to to get a new a smartphone. I can't do a smartphone. And mine is only three Gs. I think they're gonna so, be discontinuing those phones yeah, soon, they'll, but they'll uh, maybe you can answer the question, Bill. What they uh, have, yeah. uh, they, wait, let me just, um, I'm not finished. I went to get a new flip phone and I went to Spotswood uh, Verizon and they wanted me to shut off my phone and then probably two days to a week, I would get a new phone. How could I shut off my phone and not have, my, you know, be able to use my phone for doctor's appointments and things like that? So I okay. walked out of the store and my husband just now told me where there's another Verizon store. They still have flip phones, but they have them with 5Gs, I was told. Okay, my so husband. let's let Bill answer. Thank okay, you. Okay, fine. And how... Uh, okay, go, go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Yeah. So, so uh, normally you, when you get a uh, new phone, the 5G flip phones, I've measured them. They're just as bad as the 5G smartphones. So I measured those already. 
So you've got to take the precautions that you would take with any phone. Uh, we were talking about wireless radiation, Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, but there's three other types of radiation that I measure, uh, three from the wire. So think of the power of three, three from the wire, three through the air. There's electric radiation, magnetic radiation, and those are associated with power lines. So power in your house, power lines outside, and then dirty electricity are, are dealing with uh, power uh, with the power lines as well. So solar, solar panels cause a lot of dirty electricity. So I would always recommend people not to get solar. If they do get solar uh, panels, then there's dirty electricity filters that I have on my website that you can actually reduce it from. And then the underground wires are normally not an issue in a green box. If it's plastic, it's normally cable. If it's metal, then it's called, it's like a transformer. It used to be a round box, round cylinder that they had on the wires. So that should not be a problem if you're more than 10 to 12 feet away from that. Okay, we have okay, a question well, from uh, Belly, Cohen, and, Belly Cohen. Yeah, this will be our last question, Bell. You can come on, ask, and then uh, Bill will answer. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I recently got new hearing aids and they're Bluetooth and I can't wear them because I get pains in my head. And so even if I turn off the Bluetooth, Sometimes it comes through. Is there anything I can do about it? Wow. Uh, so that's one of the hidden dangers we haven't talked about. All the hearing aids with Bluetooth, they're causing huge, huge problems. Cancer in the mouth and other things. So if someone has any hearing aid professionally, have the Bluetooth turned off and make sure it doesn't come on. But you're 100% right. People are starting to find, uh, have symptoms from it as well as disease. So anyone out there, with a, with a uh, hearing aids, make sure they turn the Bluetooth off. And uh, sometimes, remember I have good, better and best solutions. Some, sometimes people say, there's no way I can do it. I say, put, it, put the hearing aid in your ear. And then whenever you don't need it, whenever you're not using it, take it please take it and put it as far away as you can. Because it's, it's just as bad as Wi-Fi and wireless radiation. Oh, that was a very interesting question. All right. I want to thank uh, everybody for coming. Next week, we're going to be uh, having as our guest uh, two rabbis. We're going to be talking about renewing the Sanhedrin. It should be fascinating. Bill, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Again, people can go to stopdirtyelectricity.com to find your book and any other items they may want to purchase for their own safety in their own homes. And I want to thank Rod Bryant for producing the show. Thank you, Rod. And thank you, everybody, for being with us. Great. Okay. Thanks again for having me. I sure appreciate it tomorrow. It was Shalom a pleasure. Shalom.